Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Zed, and today we are back with another stainless steel historical improvement project video as Venice. Last time in episode one, we expanded quite a bit, taking three extra settlements. I do want to get my diplomat down here to have a look at what our reputation is like right now, because of course we're not supposed to expand too quickly in this mod, of course. So. Yeah, I do want to check what our reputation is like right now. But what I think we want to do right now is get this army retrained for the time being. And then potentially look at taking Verona. And I think we want to turtle maybe. Once we've taken Verona, Milan, potentially Genoa as well if Pisa hasn't taken it just yet. Then maybe turtle for a little bit. Build up our economy. Make sure our lands are happy and just see what we can do in the long run sort of prepare for the future because eventually we're going to have to attack the serbs as well as attacking byzantium because of course we need both of these settlements here we need ragusa as well we need corinthos cyprus and sorry crete and cyprus as well which is going to be pretty pretty painful to take let me just check the audio settings here it seems like the music has not been saved there we go get it on 100 percent for the boys fantastic but i think we are at the end of the turn guys we've got 2,000 in the bank we should be making about 5,000 this turn which should be pretty nice so let's see whether we actually do and whether any events are going to remove some of that money in the long run Oh, fantastic. We have the Pope here. We're going to accept the trade rights, definitely. How about we promise not... No, I, I want to promise not to attack a faction. Oh, promise to attack a faction. No, don't think we'll do that. I think we'll offer map and alliance. Let's see. Can we get our first alliance? We are dubious reputation right now, which is not good, really, is it? Not good. How about we gift the Pope some map information? Let's see if that affects our reputation at all. They do accept it. They have a mixed reputation as well. Not good for the Pope, uh, but we are amiable with them. Now, maybe an alliance? Just rejected, unfortunately. So, yeah, taking those areas quickly is probably not the best thing for our reputation. But some remarks on military matters. Let's uh, read this. But first of all, guys, if you do enjoy this series and you have found some entertainment here, a like and a subscribe would be massively appreciated. So uh, thank you in advance for that. And thanks for your continued support on this series as well. Commanders should fight personally in battles. If a general is the commander of your forces in battle and he does not enter the fray, then he will likely to develop nasty traits such as cowardice. As such, you will need to risk his life from time to time to ensure that he will not turn into a bad commander. For any general, even an administratively minded one, it is always useful for him to have at least some military experience, even a small battle against weak rebels count. But with such experience, a general will fare much better in times of necessity. For instance, a general besieged by rebels is likely to develop bad traits if he has no prior experience. Note also that at the beginning of the campaign, most factions will not have access to many of their units. These units will become available only later in the game when certain historical events which trigger them have occurred. For example, the Polish medium cavalry unit will appear only after the development of heavy mail. So yeah, that makes sense. And then we have grooming governors. So let's see uh, what we want to do here. Young generals need to go to school as education is one of the most important factors in gaining skills later in life. Teenagers should be sent to a castle or a settlement with a school. And they should stay there without traveling. After some time, these young generals will gain at least a basic education, which will prevent them from sliding into ignorance and developing negative traits. Administratively minded generals will benefit most by staying in a settlement, which will allow them to gain traits useful for future governance. Some traits may be acquired just by visiting a settlement or staying in or visiting a castle. However, to become a truly good governor, it is best to task a general with the governance of a well-developed city with a diversified... Uh, I can't speak. Diversity of buildings. This will also 
also create an opportunity for the general to acquire some negative traits as well. But there are, in general, the benefits will outweigh the risks. General with a trait scholar will be able to develop the best of traits, and such men are rare gems indeed. They learn faster and able to learn even more, even after their schooling time has been completed. Okay, fan. Fantastic. So, uh, reinforce Bologna. Have four units in Bologna. I think we can definitely do that. So, let's get... Wait, was it reinforce it by four? Increase your forces here by at least four units. Well, we can do that with some of these guys. So, let's go with that. Let's also check this guy. He, so, he is military mandated. He's the Duke of Pentap uh, Pentapolis, entitled as Lord of Bologna. That's great, actually. He's of normal intelligence. He is fit for office. Troops are ready for action. So he would be better in a fort, sorry, a castle, rather than anything else. Also, let's have a look at Doe. Um, he understands logistics, administratively minded, protector of his people. So he will be better in there anyway. How about Conciliary Dominico? He is a logistics expert. Wow. Unclumpished engineer, aspiring commander, energetic, normal intelligence, uh, plain, unfortunately. This man looks normal in every feature. Army bent on glory. Wow. Fit for office and a courtier. Commanded army in two battles, of course. Signs of bravery. That's good. A mean leader and religiously proper. So some good little traits he does have there. Let's also have a look. We've got some improved relations with the Pope. And hostilities cease between R R uh, Russia and, yes, uh, one of the hordes out in the east. I think poten uh, potentially Ukraine area. Deep maritime interests for Do Pietro. That's pretty good, actually. That's really good, in fact. So, good. And we do have some money. So let's see, can we retrain anyone? We could actually retrain them, but not any of the others. How long? Three turns until they're available, so we're going to have to wait a little bit. So I think this is where we maybe turtle slightly, try to get some of our reputation back a little bit and build up our nation. So Wells over here, I think that's the best thing we can go for here. Unless we go for Rose, but it's 20 goddamn turns. Same for Farms as well. The grain exchange is pretty darn good as well. Let's have a look at that. So that gains us quite a bit of extra cash. Yeah, an extra 50 there and more than 50 there. Does increase corruption by 50. So, you know, not amazing. But it's not awful as well. Um, could also get a church, which will reduce corruption, increase public order, and increase growth. So that's another good one. But the wells, I think the wells just, they're nice and cheap. They only cost 2,000 gold. Should be nice and quick. Brothel as well, potentially. Reduces law, though. We don't want to reduce law too much. Same thing in Ancona. Do we have the ability to get anything that's worthwhile here? I mean, the stables or the boyer is not that good, really. I mean... The leather tanner, let's look for other stuff, really. I, I think it's better to build in Venetia, uh, Venice or Bologna. So let's go for the grain exchange there, too. And in Venice, let's go. We are building the orphanage already. So I think we'll leave the 3,900 we have there. Are there any decent troops that we have available? Just mm, not really. How about in Venice? I mean, we can get knights, but I don't think we need to. I'm considering getting the spear militia because they have free upkeep. So let's pop those in. They're going to get built next turn. Let's pop them in for now. Let's also have a look at Pisa. We've got Pisa and Firenze down here. Let's look at the Pope down there in Rome. So, yeah, I think what we'll do is just keep an eye over here on Genoa and Venice. Not Venice, sorry, Milan. Um, and just keep an eye to see how Pisa does. Uh, but, yeah, we need, to, we need to just chill out for a second because our reputation has taken rather a little bit of a tumble because of all our crazy goings on. We can get some galleys over here, which would be good. Uh, but we're also going to keep an eye on that there. So let's go talk to Hungary. Unfortunately, their army has run away, but they do have a road there, so we can actually see where they are going. Quite a lot of trade coming from uh, Verona over here. But that's pretty good for us if we do take Verona. I think we can safely take these two. 
rebel settlements without getting too bad on the reputation. But I think for now, let's chill out for maybe three or four turns and see what we want to do. And let's not... Uh, Let's not um, waffle on any longer, guys. <laughs> I've been waffling on for a while. So, Sicily wants trade rights. Fantastic. We'll take that definitely. Let's also see if we can offer them an alliance and maybe military access too. Go on. Take it. No! <laughs> nobody wants our reputation because... Uh, nobody wants it because we are dubious. Um... So, yeah, we did sack that first settlement. I wonder how impactful that will be in the long run. So we have costs of the kingdom here. In stainless steel historical improvement, most of the foreseen uh, project, <laughs> most of the foreseen expenses for your upcoming turn are shown in the financial panel. This panel shows the income from different sources and provides information on the expected treasury. Of course, like normal med too. There are a few exceptional cases where the money disappears. Costs of a new general when they come of age, that's about a thousand florins, with an initial two thousand florins if he married a princess. Costs of a new faction leader ascending to the throne, reflecting the costs of a royal funeral. That can be that's scaled by size, so six to one, uh, twelve hundred for what we are now, but eleven or more, twelve hundred to three thousand six hundred. Costs of a new faction heir being proclaimed, that's quite a lot. Uh, cost of joining a crusade is 3,000 per general. Wow. Cost of upkeep of the crown is 5,000 florins a turn. Reflecting the wages of assorted specialist court servants, other expenses related to ceremonies and general costs related to management of an empire only applied if the faction leader has actually gained the crown. So we've got to be prepared for that. 5,000 florins a turn and money stolen from the treasury. If there's too much wealth amassed, Starting with 2,000 florins but increased for bigger treasuries, then some people will steal. Army morale. Each general has a trait describing the current morale of troops. If they have been rested for some time, they are likely to be ready for action. If the general is a good commander, they, ev they may even be eager to fight. In both cases, they will have good morale. Once the army moves, it will start losing morale. After a few turns of constant marching, the troops will become weary. This happens faster if the troops are in enemy lands or at sea, if they are conducting a siege, although they are led by a bad commander. This will also happen if your general is on continuous turn-by-turn -turn movement. At the uh, time passes, the troops will become despondent, undisciplined, and even mutinous. Such traits will lower the morale. In, in order for troops to recover their morale, the army should return to its homeland. The speed of recovery will then depend upon initial state of morale, faith of the province population if the faction's own religion is above 50 percent, then recovery is faster okay cool so basically we just need to you know make sure we're not going crazy oh we've already we've already read that one so that was repeated but that's fine we've got four thousand florins for reinforcing bologna which is great from our perspective let's go this way so we can see both fantastic we did recruit retrain some of the troops but look at our army it is it is very very, very weary right now. Unfortunately, we can't actually even retrain these cavalry militia. I wonder where we could get them. We'd need to build some stables, wouldn't we, I think? Well, we've got a water conductor here. That's a pretty good building. Also got the port that's available. That'd be good. So, intrepid explorer for Do Pietro. But we aren't gonna leave <laughs> we aren't gonna leave our capital, I don't think. I mean, he is the supreme doge. So we don't want him to leave, really, I think is the main thing. Ooh, what are you? So we've got Sicilians, Polish. Uh, no, we want to talk to Hungary. Where has the road gone or going? There we go, Zagreb. Let's go talk at Zagreb. Trade rights with you, just accepted. An alliance, potentially. Let's have a look. No, every fucker does not want an alliance with us. Great. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah, I think those impacts of, of sieging all of these places so quickly was probably not great. I think we'll go for stables here, though. How long until it upgrades? It's only... It's losing half a percent a turn. That's not good. I feel like we need more troops in here. It seems like the more troops you have, the better the population growth. So let's have a look. Still half a percent. Let's go for another yes. one. Let's see. My Lord. Yeah, still minus half a percent. There's nothing we can do to increase that, though, at the minute. So I don't really know what we can do apart from sacking a settlement, maybe. Uh, maybe having another settlement around us that's trading, all that sort of thing. 
Uh, but yeah, we've talked to them. So let's go talk to the Holy Roman Empire. Let's see if we can uh, talk to them and try and get some extra money. So we're building there. We're building in Ancona and we're building in Zara. So we've got 11,000 gold that is just spare right now. I wonder then if Consiglieri could get some good troops. I mean, scouts, not ideal. Yeah, there's nothing really in there that's worth it. So let's leave that money in there for now. I'm also going to reduce the taxes here. So we are growing uh, ever so slightly. I know that's going to reduce the amount of money we're making. Same thing here. We're just going to go down to normal in Bologna. I know it's going to lose us a little bit of cash. But for now, I think... It's probably better to try and get that growth going. What's Bologna need? Needs 30,000 to get to the next level. And 80,000 for Venice, which is quite a long way away. Because it is a large city already. But anyway, let's end the turn. Let's see how much money gets stolen from our treasury. How to end an unwanted war. Send diplomats every turn. First, because there's a random chance for peace, which is cool. I like that. Second, because any Catholic faction that received a ceasefire order from the Pope will agree for peace with the humans. Since there is no specific information about this, the only way not to miss it is by keeping diplomatic meetings every turn. The better your relations with the Pope, the faster he may send a ceasefire order. Right after conquering a settlement, peace is almost impossible as the relations drop to a very low level. In such case, wait, only defend, release prisoners, do nothing to harm relations, and in a few turns, the enemy will forget grudges enough to be willing for a ceasefire. Usually, some amount of money is necessary, so keep around 10,000 in case you have to pay for peace. Sometimes peace will not be possible by paying the reasonable amount of money. The only way is to wait until some other faction attack your enemy, then they will be much more willing to end the war with you. If your reputation is good, also peace will be easier to obtain. Work on the mod continues, guys. So, yeah. Of course, if you want to join the mod team, I'll leave a link down below to the mod DB page and potentially the Total War Center page. So, if you do want to have a look at what they're doing and maybe join in, then definitely do go there. University of Bologna. Already in the middle 11th century, scholars from across the Catholic world were flocking to Bologna to study civil and canon law. In the wake of their activities, the University of Bologna emerged in the Western world. It is considered as the first university, even though Sorbona, the University of Paris, claims sometimes something different. <laughs> as the motto of the scholars' union was, it was Alma Mater Studiorum. We now call universities that we have graduated from Alma Mater. Cool. Game strategy, the Catholic factions will be able to build universities. However, they have to invest first in basic educational facilities, schools. Not many, two are enough. However, having a university will make education of your generals much easier. The administratively minded generals will get very valuable traits and the scholarly minded can get a doctor philosophy level and also find books in the libraries benefiting the whole faction. Fantastic. So they want me to send a diplomat up there. I mean, we did just talk to those guys, so let's try and get trade rights with them. There we go. That should bring that to the fore. Can we ally? No. <laughs> Our poor diplomat, he's probably going to lose influence from all of this negative. So we've completed that mission. More Florins. Some of the best equipped soldiers. Let's have a look then. What did you give me? I don't see... Oh, some Sergeant Spearman. Nice, 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 nice. And we can retrain those boys. Well, I think... Mm, we can't get any more Sergeant Spearmen, can we? Like, they're not even recruitable for us right now. Uh, so, you know, ideally we want to be turning these places into recruitment hubs. But as of yet, they're not great. We've got a lot of towns. So I think we want to take Verona and make it into our best recruitment hub that is a castle so is ancona so they're not high levels but that's fine in zara we built the wells that's good let's go for something else then potentially the grain exchange we might also go for the small church we do have the brothel here which is extra happiness and a little bit of upkeep thinking i mean the town watch what do we do here labor labor demand no not necessarily I think we go for the grain exchange. I think that's the best option. Going to bring us extra trade in there. Extra bit of cash. Definitely an extra bit of cash. Should be nice for us there. Very nice indeed. Now it's a very... I'm, I'm just thinking... I'm really enjoying this because... 
What I tend to do is blitz, blitz, blitz. Continual blitz, my friends. <laughs> There's not many games where I... Uh, many Total War games when I don't try and conquer everything as, as quick as possible. So it's really nice to just kind of sit back, look more at the economy, have a little bit of a chill one, and, you know, not, not go crazy. It's a little bit annoying that the uh, the Serbs are going to take Zar Ragusa, but we are just going to have to fight them. I think in the meantime, Pisa is going after Genoa. So is the Holy Roman Empire. <gasps> That's a pretty darn big army there, isn't it? I think we need to go for Ancona then. So I think we'll get... I mean, male knights, they're very expensive in the field. But how valuable have they been? They've been incredibly valuable. And while we're waiting, what we'll do is we'll send across the l these guys... That leaves Bologna a little bit unprotected. So what we'll do then instead is swap some of these guys in. We'll leave those guys in there. We could do with some more faction members. I know that's going to uh, cost us money. But for now, that's good. We've also got... I don't want another spy. That's not necessarily necessary. Could do with a diplomat, but I think we're only allowed one. Uh, but yeah, we, we've still got a lot of money. We could get some extra mercenaries, all that sort of thing as well. But for now, I think we're good. So let's end the turn there, guys. Let's also go talk to the Imperial people. Is there a way to check your reputation without going, like, do we go dip diplomacy? Oh, we are allied, we're allied with the Pope already. We're also enemies with uh, the uh, Fatimids. Which is kind of crazy, really. Not many people have allies right now, which is good for us. Apart from the Romans, who are allied to Serbia. That's going to be the big war of this campaign, guys, isn't it? Fighting the Romans for Ragusa, for these two settlements, for Corinthos, Cyprus. Ah, I said it again. Crete and Cyprus. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be a big war that's coming up. But anyway, let's end the turn again, guys. Fortunately, we couldn't spend our money. But I don't want to get more galleys. Let's actually recruit a galley for now, an extra one, just so we've got a few extra in there, just for the time being. Uh, yeah, let's get a couple, just so we don't lose our ships really, really quickly. And what I might do, I'm going to leave this, this boat there as a spy, but that's fine. Let's end the turn there, guys. So we've got a message about the Hungarian nobility. If you want to read it, you can do. I'm not going to read that because it's not about us. The costs of the kingdom. So... Didn't we... Yeah, we saw this last time, so I think it's another repeated one. New missions. Build a small church in Zara. What's that going to do? Your reputation... Oh, that's the penalty. This has is bereft a place of worship. How many turns did we have to do that? We only have five turns, so unfortunately... I don't know. I think we need to build this first. So we're going to pop that in for now. It's going to waste a little bit of cash, but it's okay. Faction announcements. We got a retinue increase for Oliverio Grassani. Nice. He's got a monk with him now. The monkey boys. There they go. Uh, and we've also got an orphanage in Venice. I think we go for the dockyard, though. Or the stonemasons. Either one is going to be pretty good. We can also get the St. John's Chapter House. We could get a bigger church. That should help our reputation, which would be good. But I think... I mean, I feel like I'm going for money over anything right now. and That's something that we just really... Do, we don't need that money, do we? So is it worth waiting 10 turns for that? I don't think so. I think it's worth going for the stonemasons. Uh, because construction cost decrease for stone buildings, 5%, increase in tradable goods. So let's see what that does. 2,400 there. And 200 from the communal buildings, which is pretty nice. Also gives an extra population growth. Nice. I think that's the one then. And then where was, was Bologna? Got the grain exchange. Do we go for the collegiate church? I also want to check, do we have access? Yeah, we've got a school here. So, can we get the university here now? Oh, we have the library available. We've also got the Palazzo Piana Terra, which should allow us to recruit knights here. So, how much for the library? 8,000. So, I think, honestly, we'll leave Bologna for now and build it next turn. Do we have enough men, though, for attacking Verona? I mean, I think we do. I don't think we need to wait anymore. 
Let's have a look. What do we want to leave behind? We'll leave behind some sergeant spearmen. And we'll leave behind... Maybe these Italian cavalry militia? I think that's enough to leave in Venice for them to be fine and happy. Let's move along. There we go. And we're going to attack Verona. Let's go for the standard amount of equipment there. And then I do want to attack Milan. I also don't know... Is that enough? Pisa to take Genoa? Because if they weaken Genoa, that would be amazing. I also don't want to fight them on the field right now. <laughs> We've pretty much just done siege battles so far. So it would be nice to have a, a field battle. But that as a field battle, maybe maybe less, less so. Let's also get another urban spear militia there. And we can retrain those boys. That's good. That's going to allow the garrisons to be a little bit better. And they, they ran away from Ragusa. Well, I think we've got to take that as, as an opportunity, right? Where be the ship? Where be the ship? <gasps> are you close enough to get people to Zara? You are. Let's go. Get off. Can we leave with all of these guys? We can. Zara's actually happy. So I just want to leave one of you. Let's get in there. And I think we just go for it. Uh, and we'll get on the ship because it's going to be quicker. So we're going to have a look. We might not be able to take it, but that's fine. This is going to cost us... Whoa. Yeah, we did spend a lot of money. Predicted 5,700 because we moved two armies at the same time. Yeah, it is punishing when you do that. So I do need to be wary of that. And let's see where we are with money after this turn. Ah, yes, I forgot about these guys. We are still dubious. They are reliable. How would you feel about an alliance? If I gave you, like, a regular tribute of, like, 400 for 10 turns, would you accept this, my friends? No, Just reject it. Hmm. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Well, we had a crash, guys, but weirdly... The autosave was loaded as in after the end turn, so I just need to check. Yeah, we still got the same missions and everything. We still got everyone yes, moving, so yes, I don't really know uh, what's going on with that, but that's fine. Let's go for this. Let's also go. I think it's only wooden walls right here. Yeah. The Byzantines and the Sicilians are here too. We'll leave the boat there to, to look after us. Um, we did actually gain money that turn, even though we are doing everything. We don't have enough for the library yet. But I think we go for Verona. We take it chill. We'll take Verona. We'll wait there for our ages. And yeah, Pisa did not have enough to take Genoa. So we, we can take our time with that area right now. We did also try to ask them for an alliance. We do have an alliance with the Pope. So I wonder if we can... Can we gain extra reputation by having that alliance with the Pope? Yeah, he feels no ill will against us. He's very happy with uh, with himself right now. <laughs> as you would be. As you would be. Uh, no, we don't want to commission a crusade as of yet. I mean, it would be funny to put a crusade on Byzantium right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't think we need to do that. And also, we don't need to spend any money. Although, Ancona... Still losing population in Ancona, which I don't know how to reverse. Like, what here could be removed to give us extra population? It's giving us population. The only thing we can do is just change it to a town, I guess. But there's nothing we can do about that. Let's also quickly quick save. So, yeah, in case it crashes again. And let's assault. So, what do they have? Spearmen, spear militia, all that sort of thing. They do actually have some mailed knights this time. I do need to organize these troops as well. But uh, what is their general's bodyguard? It is a mailed foot. What I'm considering then is let's leave that for now. Let's also try and get some more siege equipment, I think. Maybe not more ladders. Maybe more siege towers and another ram. Now let's just go for that. Let's wait another turn. I could get some mercenary spearmen. Do you know what? It's a lot of money, but let's go for it now. And we'll also wait another turn. 
I should have gone for it next turn, shouldn't I? Well, you know, min-max errors going to happen, aren't they, guys? I was a bit dumb. Oh, we got a guy come of age, so and he's 14. So he definitely, he's administratively minded. He feels unappreciated. He's a teenager, uh, can be educated. So I think, obviously, he's also severe, religiously proper. He's aloof. He's got silly beliefs. Honest? Virile, ugly again. We've got a lot of ugly people in our family, apparently. He definitely, as a teenager, needs to go to Bologna because we have a school in Bologna as of now. Uh, where is it? There it is, the school. So, yeah, here he is. He's going to be educated here. So we've got to leave him in there for now until he becomes a good governor. And then we can send him to Ancona and hopefully he will gain some, uh, get them some population growth there. That'd be awesome. Yeah, there are scouts available. We don't need them. We've got 2,000 in the bank. Let's see what we can do here, guys. Let's hopefully it doesn't crash this time. Okay, so we do have a potential wife. That's going to cost us money, though. So I am going to accept it for now. Mind your losses in battles. In SSHIP, the recruitment pools refill very slowly. New units become available for recruitment after many, many turns. Unlike in other Total War games, there is no automatic regeneration. Of course, it's med 2. To get a unit to full strength, you need to merge two or more units or come back to the place of recruitment and retrain. Nevertheless, the battles are bloody as units do not flee easily. You could win through catching prisoners. You must fight and incur losses. Furthermore, the doctor abilities of your general are very limited. Most of the troops were lost during the battles will not heal. This is a rule for both the player and AI. If you kill many enemies during a battle, they will not be healed for the AI. Cool. This means that having money is not enough to wage successful wars. Manpower is a very scarce resource and you need to pay attention. Okay, cool. Yes, that, that makes perfect sense. Uh, oh, no. Bengi has died. Yes, well, that's not the ideal. The enemy. So do we just try and siege this down as much as possible? I don't feel like we've got another general that can yes. really do anything. This guy is military-minded. He's very loyal now as well. Could we get him then? I think we have to, and I think we leave the teenager there to govern the city. <laughs> don't think that's the, the, the greatest of ideas. Yes, my lord. Your orders? But yeah, let's uh, let's okay. No, let's join these yes, fleets together. No fleet. Okay, they won't join together because they're both admirals. Ah, great. <laughs> well, you guys go down there and join yes, them. I wonder whether you can join each other too. Uh, do we have any more ships that we recruited there? I don't think so. But that's a little bit annoying. We need another general. Like, we only have this guy here who is 51, so he's going to die soon. We've got the 14-year-old. And we've got uh, Consiglieri. We've also... And that's it. And we've got the guy in the boat. So we don't have many troops, many generals. So it would be good to get some extra ones soon. Um, but yeah. Fantastic. So we cost a thousand florins for that, yes, my lord. but that's fine. Let's be. finally assault here. Should be a little bit easier now. We've got some more siege towers. So let's get into this fight, guys. It's going to be bloody as usual, but this should stabilize our economy very quickly. Men, bring our people honor. And wow, this is a fortress and a half, guys. Look at this. This is going to be incredibly brutal to siege down. We're definitely going to bring all of our troops over this side here for now. Um, let's organize them too. So we'll get all of these guys all together. We've got them next to them. Uh, let's also get the sergeant spearmen together. And with you, there we go. All the archers can go together. And then we have all the cavalry together as well. All of this siege equipment seems rather unnecessary now, doesn't it? But anyway, we're going to get these guys going out this way. They're going to run around here to take those walls there along with hmm. Do we want someone to go for the gate? I think we do. We'll leave them there. They're, the, they're like bait, basically. You guys can drop your siege equipment for now and you're just going to fire up onto the walls. The siege towers are going to take there and the other one. So let's face them the right way. Siege tower... And you don't need a ram. You can take, if we get rid of you guys on the siege tower. In fact, no. One of you can take a siege tower 
over there. And one of you, Sergeant Spearman, can take a siege tower up here. Wow, I understand now why this was so uh, brutal on the the, the, pow the power slider. Because god damn, this is going to be tough. But uh, let's go. Let's see what we can do here. Hopefully we can bait them a little bit around this side with our guy going for the gate. So you guys get going. You guys get up there. I'm, I'm not convinced all of these siege towers will even get to the walls. You guys get all the way over there. Ideally, I want you to get up here. Independent sovereignties. What are you? Just standard spearmen. We also have mercenary spearmen here. And you guys, how far are you away from being able to fire? Not too far. So what we're going to do, get you up here and get you ready to fire. The rest of them, I'm going to leave them there for now. And we need to take out what we got. Levy, crossbow, and hunters there. That should be a good one for us to fight on. So we'll try and reinforce this area here with these troops. So what do we have as reserves? We've got spear militia and some sergeant spearmen. So we'll have to use the sergeant spearmen to the best of our abilities. You guys now fire. Should be good. Nice. And we got the mercenary spearmen. You guys, you can probably go there. Does that stop them moving? It does not. Fantastic. So, let's get up there. I'm hoping these are not ballista towers. <laughs> are they ballista towers? No, they're not. They're arrow towers. <laughs> God damn. That's good. That's that's a good start. Good. Because <laughs> otherwise, these uh, siege towers would not exist anymore, would they? They'd just die. Are they even firing? Are you firing? No, you're not. Can you fire, though? That's the question. No, you cannot. So, there's no point having you here. Let's bring you back. Get back, guys. Get back, you bastard. I'll break your legs. Let's pop it back up to time six. I know it doesn't seem to like time six too much. So we'll just flip between it and not. So there we go. We're up at the walls now, which is good. But I can see how this is going to be incredibly brutal. There's a good chance we lose this, to be honest. Um, but yeah, not ideal. They've got their mailed knights there as well. So we, we can't just use our cavalry with impunity like we have previously we're going against mercenary spearmen here and standard spearmen there so let's just pause for a second what are they 5 15 3 12 so we should have the advantage here even on hard um over here that's going to be pretty equal but we do have another unit ready to fire the siege towers did make it to the walls that's going to be very helpful um, and we're getting Sergeant Spearman coming up here. They're going to struggle against all these guys. But what I ideally want to do is send the next units. So these guys, these Sergeant Spearmen, up here to deal with the levy crossbowmen and all that sort of thing. So we're going to send them very soon. We'll actually go now. Which way are you going to go? That's the question. And what I might do is, in fact, send you there too. So we are committing very, very heavily. That's the one problem here. We're going to commit very heavily to this. Very, very heavily indeed. But I think we can push through. We just need to uh, do a good job in some of these areas. And I think we're going to be good. As usual, this battle is going to take forever, guys. But that is, of course, the way of Med 2 Sieges. We are smashing down the gates. That's one good thing, though. I think... Mm, no, we can't go after them here. What have we got? Where is the town square? It's all the way back there. Oof, this is a proper, proper fortress. Proper fortress. I think we can defend this against anyone if we are defending this. So, yeah, that should be good. Right, Levy Spearman. I want you to get up there. Let's go. Sergeant Spearman, I want you to get up there. So you should be able to go through there. That'll be good. Keep going, guys. How about over here? These are just standard levy spearmen against mercenary spearmen, so I don't think we'll win that one. How about over here? Seems like we are winning. Let's keep on going against the mercenary spearmen. In fact, we could potentially go this way. So if you went that way, that would actually be quite nice for us. What I'm also considering doing is if we get our crossbowmen around this way and start firing up at them on the walls, that would be excellent for us. But I don't think we should have much of a problem against these guys. We've got Urban Spear Militia, Hunters, and Levy Crossbowmen. That should not be too bad. Here we go. We're going up the walls now. Nice, guys. Nice. Well, what I'm considering doing now 
once they've dropped the ram, which they should be able to do relatively quickly, is just jumping up on these walls here and firing across into the enemy, like those guys, the hunters, or, well, the hunters shouldn't be a problem. It should be more firing at the urban spear militia. Have you dropped the ram now? So get up there. What's that looking like? That's good. I'm considering these guys. Let's come there this way then. Let's go. And I don't think we commit anyone else. We've only got one unit. We could get our, our cavalry in there, but I think we'll be okay. How are these guys? They're winded. That's fine. Let's keep on going up here. These sergeant spearmen have taken an absolute battering. Um, so, yeah, what I want to do is get one of you units up there. That is fantastic. I want to want you one of you units up there too. Uh, in fact, no, we'll get one of you units like here. That would be excellent. There goes the spear militia. Which one, though? Which one? This one. Okay, that's not a problem. I'm okay with that. These guys have come this way, which is good for us because I think we'll win this. And then we can sweep down through here to fight those mercenary spearmen. There they go. They're running. How are we doing here, though? Not fantastically. Same thing over here. The Sergeant Spearmen seem to be doing well, but everyone else is really struggling. What is that? That's mailed knights. Well, hmm. Oh, there's the there's the there's the uh, the gates absolutely destroying our units. God damn! You guys need to get up on the walls asap. Go go go, go go go. Uh, fire. <laughs> Fire in their face. I think that's the only thing we can do. These guys need to get up on the walls safely. So, fire in their face. Fire in their face. You guys, let's keep going. Let's fight those urban spear militia. Come on, get off there, guys. Get off there. I know you want to stand up there for a little bit. But, goddamn, These guys are just chilling. We're doing well against these spearmen. Come on, guys. Keep going. Keep going. You can do it. You're doing well. You're doing well. So, as I said before, pretty darn brutal. Let's fire at the mailed knights here. If we can get rid of them, we can get our cavalry up here for a little bit. But what I'm thinking is with this unit instead, if you guys halt now, let's fire at the urban spear militia. Let's see how good these shots are slash how um, brutal they're going to be for our own guys. We could even start firing at the mailed knights there as well. Let's go. Come on, guys. Fire. That should be a really good, really good for us. Nah, it's not done that much, has it? We'll fire at the mailed knights then instead. You guys, I want you like all the way. I want you like oh, over this way so you've got a bit of a better angle. Here we go, guys. We're actually pushing through on this side now. Fantastic. Let's kill these hunters. I think once we've got these guys off here, we should be good. Okay, well, I will probably edit out a little bit for now, guys, and just watch what's happening and see what we can do. And when some more action happens, I'll call... Uh, well, not call you. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll come back in. So that is their general dead, guys. They still have quite a significant amount of troops. Um, mainly the, the mailed knights. The rest of them are all pretty done for. So what we're going to do... We're going to bring our cavalry in. We're also going to get these guys down because everyone else is pretty exhausted right now uh, especially the uh, the main knights so what we're going to do going to bring these guys down and through we're also going to back them up with these guys here and we're going to bring the sergeant spearmen as well and we're going to bring the crossbowmen too and we're just going to walk them all because they're all so tired already problem being right now is like like there's only one entrance into here. Oh, we could go around that way, but it's it's a pretty thin gap. So, and I do think these are towers, aren't they? So they do still fire at us. So we've got to be very careful going forward now. So here we go, guys. The best thing about this is the fact that we managed to take out the general on the walls over there due to the good work of the old crossbowman, which was actually fantastic. We did a really good job with that. What I'm thinking of doing is sending these guys through. These guys, can they go through that gap? I don't know. No, apparently they can't. But apparently these guys will get them on fire at will. They should be able to fire pretty nicely through here. Especially if no one can uh, get through there. That should be a nice little gap for them to fire through. So let's see how they do. Get going, guys. Fire, fire, fire. Let's see if they can fire well. 
Yeah, because the mailed knights are the only thing that's left that is of, you know, any concern now. I'm genuinely thinking, like, just blob. Let's just blob. Oh, we're getting the mercenary spearmen coming and attacking us. That's good. Let's speed this up slightly. There we go. Come on, boys. They should all be exhausted. We're all exhausted as well. Although, they've gone down in exhaustion a little bit. Not a huge amount, but a little bit. Let's now all attack the mer uh, the uh, mercenary spearmen. There we go. The there we go. And then all we have left is the mailed knights after this. So these guys are on fire at will. They should still be firing in a pretty good little arc. Just that little line there that can fire. But yeah, they are firing at the mailed knights. And they have actually killed a few of them. So that's good. Let's keep on going. The mercenary spearmen are going to be a little bit of a, a challenge to kill. But we should be okay. We should also be okay for time. That's going to be the tough thing here. Are we going to run out of time? Hopefully not. Hopefully not. That would be very annoying if we did run out of time. Uh, but I don't think we are. I think we've got enough. I think we've just got about just enough. There we go. Kill all of these guys. And then kill the, uh, the mailed knights. There we go. And then hopefully we can blob through the middle and kill the rest of them. Come on. We're all spearmen here. We should be good. If we can break these guys, that would be excellent. I don't think we're going to be able to. There we go. You guys should be able to fire out. There we go. Yes, we've lost a lot of men. I know that. I know that. <laughs> right. Let's keep on going. Let's see if we can break these guys one more time and do them a bit of damage. I am very worried for time here, guys. This is a little bit closer than I would have liked. But uh, luckily, once we've killed those mercenary spearmen, we should be good. Right. Sergeant Spearman, I want you to push through if you can. Push through. There we go. Kill the mailed knights. That's it. Pushing through is not the best tactic, but it does allow them to kill a little bit quicker, even if they get killed a little bit quicker themselves. There we go. We've not got many left. Let's go. Kill this guy. Come on. Glorious. Anyone else left? Oh, not much time left on the clock. But come on. One guy. One guy. Really? Oh. Wow. What a brutal battle. That is the one thing about this mod that I've found. The battles feel so weighty, which is really, really good. I do really enjoy that fact. They feel so weighty indeed. But a glorious victory nonetheless, guys. So let's carry on to the campaign map. And we crashed. No. <laughs> Ah, uh, so we had another crash, guys. <laughs> it's saying it's graphic, it's graphically, but if I have a look, if any of you got any tips about this, I don't know, I don't see how it could be graphically. Like, I have a 470 Ti. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't see how that can be. So, so what we're going to do, guys, instead, we're going to also win attack it. Just let me know if you think that's acceptable. I think if we, uh, you know, if this happens and we do crash after a battle like that, I feel like it's fine. I don't want to have to play that again because that was like a half an hour battle. Uh, and 164 men lost. It is a bit silly because we, of course, we lost a lot more than that. A renowned victor after another battle. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Renowned victor. That's fantastic. Should be able to get more from a military education. And that has also meant that we need to repair all of these. But I'm going to keep... Mm, you know what? Let's repair the cisterns and the water mills. I know it's only five gold. But we should be making a decent amount of cash. Enough cash to uh, sustain this for a little while anyway. So... Huh. Yeah, just let me know if you think that's acceptable, guys. If we do have crashes like that, then uh, to do the auto-win attacker. It's saying it's graphical, so before next episode, what I will do is just lower the graphic settings. But I don't see how the graphic settings would affect this with the rig that I've got. But anyway, I have run larger Desiree every time I've played the game as well. So it's not to do with that. Like, it can't be to do with that. But anyway, let's end the turn, guys, and let's see where we get to. Royal crowns, guys. So this is what I was talking about early on when we wanted to crown our leader. The main factor preventing rulers from creating large empires was the disloyalty of their nobles at home, which forced leaders to divide their attention between conquest and the preservation of order. When the rich and powerful found themselves far away from the eyes of their overlord, they would often try to establish their own rule. 
Proximity to their liege lords would generally prove sufficient to suppress these ambitions. In turn, the rulers needed legitimacy, preferably with God's blessing. One method of acquiring the legitimacy was a formal coronation. This is reflected in uh, SSHIP gameplay. A faction leader may acquire a crown, thereby giving him increased authority. The crown gives both direct benefits for the king and also boosts general's loyalty in an indirect way. As the penalties associated with the distance to your capital are reduced when you have a crown faction leader. Plotters and usurpers are less likely to appear in a kingdom with a crowned king. As a result, a good mid-game goal for the player is to attain the faction's crown. Furthermore, and maybe the most important, the provinces exhibit an additional unrest if the king is uncrowned, home province of 5% and conquered provinces of 10%. The provinces required for gaining your faction's crown can be found in the map, yep. There is also an easier way to have your ruler crown, namely having this trait strong legacy from his father. In this case when, the, case, when the king's heir ascends the throne, he may be crowned even if he does not have sufficient personal qualities or rule over all the provinces. Okay. Inherits his father's crown. Okay, that's cool. That's really cool. We've got a success for building that. Does that make the Pope like us anymore? No, <laughs> he still doesn't like us that much. And we're allied. Come on, Pope. You, we know you want to you wanna like us, don't you? So that's continuing development there. We repaired that in Verona. Let's also repair the castle. And I think that's it. We'll leave 3,000 gold in there. Aspiring commander for Consigliere Domenico. Uh, Nymerio Polani, schooled, which is basic administrative education, which is great. And uh, Domenico gets the Marquis of Verona, which is pretty good as well. And I think it's a case, again, of just turtling a little bit again, calming down slightly. Let's get a little bit of extra money in the coffers. Yes. If we can take that settlement, it would be great. Where is the ship that's yes. got him in? Oh, it's here. Fantastic. Yeah, if we can take Ragusa, that'd be fantastic. Honestly... You know, this, this army may not be... Troops eager to fight, that's good. But this army may not be um, that expensive for us to just chill out for a little bit. Also, like, every single one of these guys is an admiral. <laughs> we, can't, we can't merge them at all. Well, that's a little bit annoying. Um, so it looks like we have to recruit ships all from the same ports. But, okay, that's... I mean, it's not a problem. We'll, we'll just wait there. You guys can go there. Let's also do that. That should reduce the troops there for a little bit longer. But for the rest of this, let's just uh, chill out for a little bit. That's going to be a very hard uh, task to take Milan. Where do we want to go with these guys? Hmm. Let's go. Let's go see whether we could like bribe Genoa. That would be good because surely that's not going to get our reputation any worse than it already is. So, yeah, that's fine. Let's end the turn, guys, again. So your faction leader has gained the trait Office Granter. With this trait, he has the ability to create and distribute ministerial offices to your generals and governors. A ministerial office is an ancillary acquired by the faction leader and passed on to a general through manual swapping. Each faction has access to up to eight offices. Only three are available from the beginning of the game. The rest will appear over the 200 years of your campaign. They will show up in the faction leader's disposal if he ends his move in a settlement with the right infrastructure, e.g. a drill... Uh, a drill square for the office of marshal, a library for the office of treasurer, or a council chambers for the privy seal. For most of the other offices, a university is required, and sometimes a relevant building as well. Okay, cool. An office provides significant and specialized benefits to the holder of that office. Some offices are of military nature, and some are more administrative. More importantly, however, is the longer-term impact that offices have on acquiring certain traits and the additional loyalty offices give, sometimes indispensable in larger kingdoms. Note that just one office is enough to provide such an effect. The best strategy for the player is therefore to keep one ministerial officer per general, and also worth noting that the faction leader does not gain anything from keeping an office for himself. On the contrary, he loses some authority for being an office monger. Holding an office will change the psychology of the general who receives it, and not always for the better. For instance, you will notice that some generals are more likely to get angry when ignored if they believe they are important nobles, and the granting of an office is liable to give them such benefits. Okay, send emissary to Pisa. What for, though? What, what, what do you want me to get? Hmm. 
send an emissary to them. Yeah, I mean, well, that's I'll, I'll I'll try and do that. We were sending this guy over to Genoa anyway, so we might as well go to be what? I swear we had trade rights with these guys. How about an alliance, maybe? I don't mind having an alliance with you. We're still dubious. We are pathetic in power, apparently. But that's good. That has brought us some more cash. Definitely worth it. Uh, hostilities cease with Poland and Hungary. Okay. Completed the repair in Verona. So, yeah, let's have a look. Does he have any offices then? Keeper of the Privy Seal. The most trusted man has in his keeping the king's Privy Seal. His fortune's tied to the king's. He's now even more loyal. He suspects that he was chosen by God himself. Loyalty and piety. What I think we do is give that to this 14-year-old right now. <laughs> is he still 14? He's 15. You are, yes, you're a great 15-year-old, man. You're a great 15-year-old, so let's give that to him. There we go. He now has that. That should make him loyal. It should also give him better traits for governing, which is why he's in Bologna at, for the first place, so that he can govern a little bit better as well. I think we keep the Cardinal in here. Like, I don't think there's anywhere that it's worth going. 82% Catholic there, though. And only 50% in Ragusa. So let's get our Cardinal down there. So when we take Ragusa, um, we can actually start converting it. We've got a little bit of cash now. Venetia is building still. Let's see what we want to build in Verona. I think we want to build a port, definitely. Costs a lot of money. Doesn't take that long to build, though. But that trade increase doesn't seem like a lot. But I don't think it shows... The trade incre increase from the trade fleet. So, yeah, we'll keep that there for now. We've got another admiral there. Verona, let's see what we want to build maybe next turn. Probably a chapel, I think. So, let's do that. And let's keep on sieging down Ragusa 2. I don't think we want to do anything else. We're just going to slowly build up, guys. Okay, we get a papal bull which is the first papal bull granting privileges to the military order, which will allow us to recruit Templar units from chapter houses. Provincial titles. Some of your generals have recently gained ancillaries called provincial titles. The provincial title reflects uh, that your faction leader has entrusted a noble with the management of some particular province. Your noble will gain benefits from a certain rights directly related to that title from a heightened perception in the eyes of his peers, from access to people engaged in the management of the province, and from the land holdings of the other money-providing entities. There is always one title per province, and it is gained when a general ends his move in the settlement of a province and does not yet have any other provincial title. There is only one title per province. A general can only gain a certain province's title if that is not yet possessed by any other general. They are transferable from one general to the other. In general, each general should have at least, at most, only one provincial title, as having more of them would represent a wasted opportunity for the other generals. So, if a general loses the title, well, stripped of title trait, ooh, we don't want that. So, we need to put four more units in Zara, which is going to be a bit of a pain, to be honest. But uh, we could should be able to do that relatively easily. Let's get these urban spear militia and maybe a mercenary spearman then. And let's get them into Zara. Uh, and we built the grain exchange in Zara. Very nice. That's good. Yes. And, uh, yeah, I forgot to mention. It's come to this, guys. Byzantium has attacked us. Does that mean we're at war with the Serbs? No. Just Byzantium. Well, this may be a good opportunity to snipe Cyprus and all of those things, but we don't have a fleet worthy of going there as of yet. So I still think we turtle and just react to what Byzantium is doing. For now, though, let's have a look at this. Can we build that river port? That's going to cost us a little bit too much money. I think we go for the chapel then. I am slightly worried down south Byzantium is going to turn up with a pretty big army. But for now, I yes, think it's okay. Let's just scout sale. along a little bit. So we'll scout yes, over here. No, they really don't have much of an army here. So that's fine. We've also got a few different yes, fleets. So that's okay. 
A uh, bit scared of that fleet dying, though, very quickly if they uh, if they attack. So is there anything else we want to build? We're building the port. We're building the chapel. And we could build the St. John's Chapter House next. And that will allow us to build knights, right? So that should be pretty cool. What was this building? Are more farms and estates? Probably not right now. Anything worth building in Zara? I mean, we could get started on one of these farms. Takes 20 turns. All roads. I think roads, honestly, will be the best thing there for us. I mean, are any of these other things that worth it? Not really. So 20 turns for the roads, but let's see. So let's end the turn again, guys, and let's see what happens with Byzantium. Ah, uh, goddamn, we have been attacked by them here, so we're going to automatically resolve that, and we did we did lose and run away, but that's... Sh okay, Serbia's now attacked us as well, so I guess we're going to have to react to that. We definitely cannot um, just accept it for now. The Prussians, cool. The Prussians may raid people. Okay, that's cool. Unit descriptions may be incorrect. Okay. And military education. Any general spending a whole turn in a castle type settlement can gain military education. So just the same as um, the administrative, but with castles. Yes. So what I think we need to do is make sure we siege down Ragusa. They have a few troops over here. So I think we're going to have to get some of these guys as mercenaries. I know it's going to cost us some extra cash, but I think that's going to have to happen. This guy's got a mercenary captain as well now. So war with both, yeah, the Serbs and everything else. Eminent courtier for Nymerio Parlani. And pilgrim to Rome is this guy. Oh, that's fantastic, actually. Uh, but yeah, that's cool. That is really cool. But yeah, everything... Shit has just hit the fan, guys, hasn't it? <laughs> so this army, let's get them going. Who do we leave behind in here? I think this Levy crossbowman. Not many men in there, is there? So let's get that in the Verona too. Let's get across to Venice. And we shall recruit those uh, retrain those troops as soon as we can next turn. And then what we're going to do is jump across. We're going to pop that boat in there so it only takes one turn for us to jump across and we will attack this settlement too but i think we're going to leave that for next time guys so uh, i hope you did enjoy guys i hope it's all right doing that auto win attacker for that auto resolve if the game crashes if you guys do know why it's crashing i'm running large address aware and I have a very good rig, so I don't know why it would be crashing graphically. But do let me know if you do know any solutions. For next time, I'll just, uh, you know, reduce the graphics settings and see whether that yes. does help as well. But thank you very much. Oh, yeah, we've also got these units, haven't we? Why don't I drop them off here to join them? So this army is an actual decently sized one. And you guys, you can't actually join them, can you? So we're going to pop you in there for now. Fantastic. Well then, guys, thank you very much for watching. It's been a pleasure, as always. Please do like and subscribe. It really does help the channel out. And I will see you all again on the next video.